The thing that's so nice about it is, like I said, everything is right there. Mm -hmm. You know, I can go to the market, I can go to around the corner into the rice fields and take pictures. Right. I can go to the bank downtown. I can do anything I want, you know? You know that song? I left my heart <laughs> in San Francisco. Well, that's how I feel. I kind of left my heart in, in Taiwan right. a bit. Hi, hi, we're Shabai de Baba. Yes! Three and a half years ago, we came to this exact park in Tucson, Arizona. We filmed our very first video together talking about your life in Taiwan, talking about, you know, why you left Taiwan, talking about how Taiwan was for you, what made you move there. Three and a half years later, we are back in this park for a very special reason. You have an announcement to make, huh? Yeah, we are moving back to Taiwan. <laughs> First, I want to hear about, for those who don't know, I want to hear a little bit about your life in Taiwan. What happened there? Well, it was great. We had a, we had a church going, we had some friends and some people coming, and uh, we were having a great time, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, where we lived, there was everything was right there. We went to the Danan Suchang and a number of other places. Yeah. And it was just awesome. Uh, we really enjoyed it there. So what brought you guys to the decision of moving back to Taiwan? Well, it was a couple of things. Mm -hmm. The first thing was we left Taiwan when I got really sick. Right. And uh, I had to have heart surgery and all of that stuff because uh, we didn't want to be a drain. Right. And so uh, we got here, I had the surgery, everything went well and uh, uh, we've decided we're gonna go back. And when we left there, we always felt like God still had something for us there. Mm. You know, like we, we left Taiwan, but we still always felt like, you know, there's the people that we had that have kind of fallen by the wayside now, you know, they're not there. We thought, you know, maybe we can come back and pull it all back together again a little bit. And so that's one reason. And, and the other reason I got my heart right, because mm. it's fixed. <laughs> That's right. So when you left Taiwan at the time, you weren't really ready to go, right? I, I wasn't ready to go at all. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I always thought that it, I'd be in some tomb up in the mountains there. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. When I, I thought that if I died, I would die there, but I didn't expect to ever really be coming back. Right. I'm glad we did, but on the other hand, I, you know, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't my plan. Mm -hmm. So tell us about life here in Tucson for the past four years that you've been here. Well, it's been it's been fun mm -hmm. because you know now we're part of a big church. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people we've made some really close friends who we're going to miss a lot. Uh, we got to be around Emily. Yeah. We got to see Emily's baby and uh, watch him grow up a little bit. Yeah. You know, we spent four years here, yeah. and uh, you know Tucson. Yeah, I like the desert. Except that it sucks every bit of moisture out of my skin. <laughs> yeah, Taiwan, what does mom say about the desert versus Taiwan weather? When it's hot here, it's a dry heat. Right. So it's like being in the oven. Taiwan, it's like being in the sauna. Yes. So and today he made a comment. What did you say? I said, what, which would you prefer? Where do you go to relax? You yeah. go to the sauna, right? You go to the sauna, <laughs> you know, you go to the desert. So. so what do you envision for your life going back to Taiwan? What do you see yourself doing? What do you see yourself getting involved well, in? Well, one of the first things I was going to start my blog back up. Mm -hmm. I was going to uh, put myself in the church in Ping mm -hmm. and and just be as much of a help to that pastor as he wants or needs. Mm -hmm. The thing that's so nice about it is, like I said, everything is right there. Mm -hmm. You know, I can go to the market. I can go to around the corner into the rice fields and take pictures. Right. I can go to the bank downtown. I can do anything I want, you know? You can get a little bit of your independence back. Right, because right? here everything is, you have to have a car yeah. to live here. And and I can't drive, and so I have, to, I have to depend on somebody else to take me places. Yeah. I'm not into it. I think for me personally, coming back here and you know living in Tucson for a little bit, living in Taiwan for a bit, Tucson is a really cool place. There's so much to see. There's so much nature. The people here are really, really lovely. You know, there's lots of street tacos. There's lots of tacos, good food. But there's always something that draws me back to Taiwan and keeps me wanting to go back. So is that how you feel or what do you Well, I, I think my, you know that song, I left my heart in <laughs> San Francisco. Well, that's how I feel. I kind of left my heart in, in Taiwan. Right. 
I can live any as long as your mom's there. I can live anywhere, right? Aww. Taiwan is just like, as far as I'm concerned, the perfect. It's a very special place. It's a it's a great environment. There's all kinds of good food. There's good people. There's a lot to do. It's always it, you know I always liked an urban environment where everything is just boom all the time, and uh, uh, you know so. I'm looking forward to it. So I have a question. I guess my next question is, while you've been here the past four years, what is the thing that you've missed most about Taiwan? <laughs> how much time do you got? How long All day, is this, go ahead. How long is this video gonna be? <laughs> I had this thing that I used to get on my scooter mm -hmm. and I would go here to get Xiaolongbao and here to get a Shui Jinbao and here to get a Son Yobing, you know? Right. I mean, I, I just had these, I had this like circuit of people that I would go buy food from. I missed that, I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, I also missed the rice fields. Mm. You guys, remember you guys used to give me a hard time about rice fields <laughs> all the time. I'd say, oh, that's beautiful. And they'd go, oh, where's the rice field, right? Yeah. There's more opportunities to see a more diverse species of birds, I guess, right. you know. So for those who don't know, my dad is very into birding, which is going out and seeing birds in their natural habitat in the wild and also taking pictures of them. Taking pictures mostly. I, you know, I see some of these other guys and I go, well, that guy's a bird or me, I'm, a, I'm an amateur <laughs> photographer. <He's> an amateur, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going back into life in Taiwan is gonna be, it's your next adventure, right? I think so, yeah. So he has a blog called The Taiwan Adventure, which he's gonna start up. I'll link it down below so everyone can check that out. If you wanna practice your English reading, you can learn from that. He writes really, really well. So I'll link that down below. But now that we have made this decision, right, or you have made this decision, what does the next step look like? What does the process look like? How do you move back? Do you have citizenship? You know, all these little details. What does that look like for you? Well, it's a lot easier than the last time we went there. Mm -hmm. uh, the most difficult thing is getting the dog back in. Mm. We contacted the company that we've moved with three or four times already, Lucky right. Moving. They've moved us back and forth across the ocean three times already. And we contacted them. They're, of course, very helpful. And, I, mean, I dropped a few names, and so they were very friendly. Ah. And then um, <laughs> we already have our uh, APRC, our permanent residence card. And so we don't have to go through all the visa filing paperwork and all that right. stuff again. That was a kind of a bummer. Right. And, and you have a house to come live in we have, because yeah. you're staying with us. And, and it's the same place we lived in before. Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes it just a totally awesome thing. So for those who don't know, they have a dog named Charlie. Charlie, Charlie Wong. is a cute little Taiwanese Hong Kui being red poodle. And he came, we got him in Taiwan. He came back with you to America. And now he's going back to his homeland. He's going home. Yeah, you know, and I'm really kind of <laughs> interested to see what he's going to think. Yeah. You know, when you first got here, it was like, well, where's the green stuff? To, where's the grass? Yeah, to go to the restroom <laughs> on. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how he uh, responds to all of that. What do you think are some of the struggles that you guys are going to face going back to Taiwan? You know, we're pretty used to Taiwan. Right. And we, we pretty much understand the culture. We understand how things work there. I don't anticipate any problems on that part. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, you know, a lot of the places that we used to go to to get baking, you know, equipment and stuff like that, those have closed or moved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't say yeah. where they're going or what they're yeah. doing. And so uh, there's that kind of stuff. We have to relearn how to find certain places again, I think. Right. But other and then than the that, car as well, right? Yeah, Everything. the car is going to be a problem. So here in the States, there is a lot of accommodation for disabled people. And so, for example, going into every single store is going to be a flat surface so that people in wheelchairs or people pushing strollers can get into that. And they also, your car has a ramp, so you can take your wheelchair and drive right up onto it and click into the car, which it's very sad because I contacted a lot of different people about getting that car into Taiwan and it just seems too expensive. So if anyone has any recommendations for disability vehicles and something that they could buy that's going to be not too expensive, you know, something reasonable, but also something that's going to make his life a little easier in terms of getting around transportation, let us know in the comments down below because that is kind of the struggle that we're facing right now, right? Yeah, that's probably... And you cannot ship medical equipment, aka wheelchairs and, you know, disability carts and all these things 
into Taiwan without a large duty placed on it, which means we have to get rid of all these and get them new in Taiwan as well. So that's kind of a struggle that we're finding out about now, but I think it's definitely handleable, right? Mm. It used to be that disabled stuff was not available to uh, non-citizens. Yeah. You know, like you, you couldn't get a disabled placard and you couldn't get all that stuff. Yeah. But that's changed. Yeah. Actually, as a result of your uh, video, the video we did in Taipei. And so... Uh, Making changes. <laughs> yes. Not the financial part of it. Right. But at least the part where we can park the car and... Park the car in the disabled spot, you know. Now we needed like. some disabled spots to park it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the past... Four, and, four years that you've been here, going back to Taiwan now, I know mom's gonna miss her friends, she's gonna miss having a garden and a backyard and a swimming pool. What do you think you're gonna miss? I'm gonna miss my friends. Yeah. It's really funny because where we sit in the church, two couples are sitting right in front of us mm -hmm. and then us, and we've all gotten to be really close. And they're helping us get packed and ready to go and yeah. all that stuff. And I'm going to really miss them, although they said they're going to come out and visit if they... And they're all retired, so... Not, that'll be a good thing. I'm miss yeah. the church. Yeah. Uh, the sunsets. The sky. Yeah. And just the sky in general in Arizona is really beautiful. Yeah. And the mountains. Tucson has monsoons, just yeah. like Taiwan does. Right. Just not as many. Right. And, and you know, some days it's just pouring rain. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, rain in the desert was something I never expected. Rain in Taiwan, totally normal. Rain in the desert, you're like, what? This does not make sense. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> we got all these rivers that are totally dead dry right. until it rains. And then they're like raging things. And then the water just goes right into the sand again. Yep. You've come to Taiwan a couple times, but once you move back, what is the first thing you plan to do? What are you like, I gotta go do this, and my first week I need to do this. These are the things that I miss the most. Well, one of the very first things I would have done was go to Liu Shuja. Oh no! But it's closed, and so, <laughs> you know, I just loved that chicken. Yeah. Uh, and so, I. I won't be able His to do that. His famous quote, che, che, che. Che, che, che. He used and to tell that to the aunties that work in there. I want a chicken, che, che, che. <laughs> so probably I want to get a gua bao. Mm -hmm. I want to get a shui jin bao. Yep. I want to get duck and goose. Oh, yeah. I want to go to that place in Elon and have duck again. I also want to go to Fu Shoshan tea production ah. and see Michelle. And I'm running out of tea, so I need to get tea. Yes, for sure. So I think that this is going to be a pretty good adventure for you. I think that, you know, when you're retired, one of the best things to do is enjoy life and enjoy it where you want to be. And I definitely see the struggle between like, oh, we want to be in the States, but we also really, really miss Taiwan and love Taiwan. So do you see yourself coming back often? Or do you think that's something that you're like? I don't travel well. I see your mom coming back pretty regularly. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm going to want to come back because I want to see Liam and, yeah. and, you know, Emily as well. And Michael hang out at church. And, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to miss those things. Yeah. So I want to do that too. But I don't think I'll be able to. Not as often as we do, right? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't think this is us leaving Tucson so much as just taking a very extended vacation back to Taiwan. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, when I stopped pastoring, mm -hmm. it was because my pastor in California suggested that he said, you know, he goes, I'm a firm believer in enjoying the, the last years of your life, so yeah. you ought to just retire and do whatever you want. Do you see these as the last years of your life? I don't know. You know, I don't really think about it much. I don't. I don't want to get too old. I don't want to be old and <laughs> decrepit. So my dad died when he was 71. Okay. I'm 68. <gasps> don't say I, that. But I think oh, I got gosh. a little more time. Okay. Hopefully, fingers crossed with that one. <laughs> uh, I had a pretty rough go when I was here for a while. Yeah. So there's still a lot of stuff that we have to prepare. We are here for the next month and a half to help them get all moved, to get all of their stuff together, help them get everything onto the boat so that they can move. And they are going to move into Eric and I's house 
So our house is gonna be full of fun, full of adventures, full of family, full of love. But we can't wait for this next chapter of all of our lives together. And I'm hoping that we'll be done moving, packing and all that stuff pretty quickly, uh, you know, by hopefully by the end of this month. So we can have a couple of weeks to go to maybe LA and visit some friends there yeah. and go spend as much time with Liam and Emily and Michael as possible yes. before we go. Because yeah. I don't think they'll be coming very often because they're just so stinking busy all the time. Yeah, they're definitely very good at their jobs and very needed at their jobs, right? So I think this is going to be a fun adventure. I think that you guys are going to have a great time and I can't wait to see what the future holds. The triumphal return. There you go. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> <laughs>